Hello, everybody. You've tuned in to the Indiana State Police Roadshow brought to you by the Indiana State Police Alliance, Cops for Kids, a subsidiary of the Indiana State Police Alliance. Their continued support of the Indiana State Police Roadshow is always appreciated. We thank them for being with us. Uh, Behind the scenes, as usual, is Tom Trial, putting us on YouTube site each and every week for uh, our show to be viewed on the Indiana State Police YouTube site. And I got a good, good, good friend with me today. Former Indiana State Police Sergeant, first Sergeant. No Sergeant, that's correct. <laughs> R.J. Lang, Rick Lang, thanks for being here, buddy. Well, thank you for asking. Me. I appreciate you coming up here, and it's not an Indiana State Police uniform you're you're wearing right now, um, but you did retire with that uniform, and now are at another gig. That's true. That's that's amazing. Uh, he's a chief of Martinsville Police Department. Been there since January 1. January 1. And uh, we're going to get into that and talk a little bit about it. But tell us about your career, Rick. This is what, your 42nd year in law enforcement? 42 years in in law enforcement. Started in uh, 1974. And I was uh, born and raised Liberty, Indiana, uh, over in the eastern part of the state. And uh, graduated high school. Uh, Back then, manufacturing uh, was still a good job uh, to have. Uh, manufacturing has left now uh, as compared to what it was back then. Uh, and I was working in the factories, but I knew that wasn't me, and I wanted to do something uh, different uh, with my life. And um, uh, met a FBI agent at the uh, bank in, in Richmond, Indiana. And the next thing I knew, I was on a plane heading to Washington, D.C., and I began working uh, in 1974 for the Bureau of Investigation, Federal Bureau of of investigation uh in washington dc so was that an eye-opener for a liberty indiana boy to be going to washington it was a huge (laughs) eye-opener i was living right on east capitol street uh five blocks away from the capitol and and uh it was actually a rooming house and this was right after watergate okay so it was very interesting i had a, a writer that lived uh right down the hallway from me and and we all had to share one bathroom on one floor you know <laughs> so it was kind of it was it was interesting to say the least but yes it was a huge eye opener for me personally so what made you uh, decide to come back to indiana and do the indiana state police well i missed indiana i missed my family you know and and i always have a, a soft spot spot for uh, washington dc uh i i still continue to go back to Washington, D.C., but uh, I came back to uh, Indiana and began working for the Indiana State Police again as a civilian in 1976. Was that downtown? Yes, it was. Okay, so in 1976, you're uh, working as, what was your job there? I was working in the records division. Okay, and somebody approached you and said, hey, we think you ought to be a good trooper, or you saw the job opening come up and thought, hey, I'd be a good trooper, or how'd that work? (laughs) No, I I uh, had that feeling. I can remember as a kid uh, uh, out in the pasture there in Liberty, Indiana, watching the uh, white state police cars go right. over State Road 44, uh, and I always admired them. Uh, Connorsville Post was just west of us there. So you saw the big Mercury's and things going by with that lone bubble on top. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely, and and. Uh, I can't say that it was an over uh, overriding uh, wish of mine to be a trooper, but uh, circumstances just happened. Somebody else had a plan for me, and I just followed it. And uh, uh, I uh, went to the academy in 1978 and graduated from the academy and then uh, uh, became a trooper, was assigned to Putnamville Post. Okay. Spent my entire career at Putnamville Post and uh, originally broke in in Hendricks County as a probationary officer and was – about two and a half years later, I was transferred to Morgan County, where I spent the majority of my career. And that's where we spent a lot of time together. I was there in Morgan County. Well, you were raised there, you know. <laughs> so, yes, yes, that's how we met. But, uh, and that's very unusual, too, to spend your entire career at one post. That's, that's yeah, a- it's kind of like Reggie Miller. <laughs> <laughs> and you got the same pay raise, too, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So what was your career in the Indiana State Police? How long were you on the road before you decided, I'm going to try something a little different here? I was on the road uh, for seven years uh, as a uniformed trooper, and and, uh, the the last five of that seven was in Morgan County. And I was lucky enough to work a a couple of good criminal cases, and that's where the bug uh, really bit me is is, uh, went through a, a pretty good jury trial, lasted probably about 10 days. 
and and I enjoyed that. I was one of the rare officers that yeah. actually enjoyed going to trial because it, I, I liked the chess match of it, mm-hmm. you know, and and uh, and also uh, I learned uh, what makes a good uh, investigator and what makes a good case by going to trial. And um, so in 1985, uh, I started uh, working in, in the investigations division as a narcotics officer, assigned still out of the post, though, however, right. back then. Yeah. And uh, and then uh, 1987, I left that position and uh, was in investigations as a surface detective pretty much the rest of my career. So uh, who did you work with uh, at, at the post there? What, what was your... Uh uh, sergeants, it was, it was sergeants then, right? As detectives. Well, there were, uh, uh, Jack Hanlon was, was okay. the sergeant, uh, uh, over investigations at the time. And Frank Love, uh, yeah. was also a sergeant, uh, uh, in the interim and my, during my career, uh, uh, detectives were always sergeants at the beginning of my career. Uh, they were, they were promoted in rank. However, that changed and they were, uh, were trooper investigators at the time that I became an investigator, you know, so there was more of a rank structure, yeah. a little bit more of a, a, a career path developed, uh, for investigations, uh, you had your DIC, your district investigative coordinator, that was over all the detectives there at the post. So you, you've you got the bug, you like the detective, and, and then you went full-time as a detective? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So I was, I was full-time uh, investigator from uh, 1985 till the time that I retired in 2009. And probably one of the best and well-known cases that I know and you know that, and state of Indiana knows and and world nationwide is is the jill bearman case and and you were the lead detective on that do you still get inquiries about that and, and occasionally occasionally that case was three three years old uh, uh when uh we assumed it and the reason when i say we putnamville uh post and the state police and the reason why uh we assumed it is because her remains were found in morgan county right you know, and that was quite some time after the actual yeah, she went missing in 2000 and and we found her remains March 9th of 2003 career changer life changer yeah. um i had worked several homicides uh prior uh but this one was different and and i'd been asked before why is it different and uh it was because basically that Jill was just your regular person she didn't put herself in a position uh, as so many do for something like this to happen. She was just out riding her bike that day. Yeah. And, and she's, just, she was the same age as my daughter is at the time. You know, yeah. my daughter now, my oldest is, is 36 and, yeah, and has a, is married and has a, my grandson and, and all the things that Jill was denied. Right. You know, yeah. So, yeah, there was no, uh, questionable life, uh, that she had done questionable life uh, decisions. It was just unfortunate circumstances. Right. She was she was at the wrong place, the wrong time. Basically, is what she did, and she, and she was following a passion that I also have is in cycling. You know, and and uh, unfortunately, I don't get uh, the opportunity to cycle as much as I like uh, now. But but uh, uh, I admired her for in a lot of ways, and that was one of them. Well, again, you're listening to the Indiana State Police Road Show. I'm uh, Sergeant Rich Myers, brought to you by the Indiana State Police Alliance. I'm speaking with uh, Chief of Police now of Martinsville, and we're going to get that to you here just a little bit. But I, I know you went from Indiana State Police career to another law enforcement career. Where did you go then? Well, life's all about reinventing yourself, <laughs> I think. And, and as, uh, as soon as I retired, 10 days later, I was uh, working for the Hendricks County Prosecutor's Office as their investigator up there and, and, uh, enjoyed my time there. Uh, Pat Baldwin is still the prosecutor there. She's the one that hired me there. Very nice person. And, uh, uh, I stayed there for six years. Um, and, and, uh, I saw the disposition that I am in now. Right. Again, I reinvented myself. <laughs> uh, uh and, and let me ask you this. How, how old are you now? Oh, geez. Uh, 61. 61. Yeah. And you decided to take the leap of faith and say, hey, I want to try this. Why? Well, uh, a big part of it was is, uh, is, cl- is closer to home, right. you know, how it personally affects me. But also, 
uh, I miss the people of Morgan County, not, not to say anything about where I worked before, but right. I mean, I, I wanted to be closer to the people, uh, where I lived and, and, uh, Morgan County, even though I wasn't, uh, born and raised there, you know, is, is truly the way I, the way I feel about it is where Hoosier hospitality lives. I mean, um, it's, it's rare that you really meet a stranger down there right. and, and, uh, people still know each other and still care about each other. And, and, uh, we have our issues and as long as we have it, humans, we're always going to exactly. have issues. But, uh, uh, I miss Morgan County. I saw that, uh, the chief of police position was posted. Um, I applied and here I am. And, and, uh, it's been a uh, learning curve. I knew the learning curve was going to be steep because I spent most of my almost my entire career in investigations and i i certainly didn't uh wasn't in charge of an entire department and uh, i am now we have uh 24 great officers uh 13 great reserves uh, okay. great great support personnel and uh and great people that we serve and and uh it's it's really been enjoyable for me well i know you had a, a whole new um administration come in uh yes mayor shannon cole your That's new mayor correct. there she hired you, and uh, um, what what as chief has struck you back is, man, I didn't expect this. <laughs> this is something that uh, I didn't see coming when I took this job. Well, that depends on which day you talk to me. <laughs> but but uh, uh, actually, uh, people ask, has asked me that several times, is what's been your uh, biggest surprise? And, and I would say the biggest surprise for me is is the quality of people that we have working on the department uh, not that I expected anything bad but but uh, uh, I'm amazed daily you know uh, about the capabilities of our officers uh, there in in uh, Martinsville and how many hats they have to wear uh, mm-hmm. to get the job done you know on the Indiana State Police uh, you know we have divisions and and you have a quartermaster and I, I I you go watched, up and get a pair of pants, and they give you a pair of pants. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and and uh, I watched my deputy chief out there stripping radios out of cars when we got our new cars. You know, he, he, he's a quartermaster plus a deputy chief, and and it just amazes me. And and um, uh, the one thing that I'll say about him since I've been there, January one, and here we are in July, I've not had one person say, "Chief, that's not my job." Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure that's uh, a great aspect and and great challenge to you but it's it's wonderful to have that feeling to know that your officers are going to step up and be behind you and i've heard nothing but good from uh from your administration there uh i appreciate that so uh, i know one thing that i've heard that you're looking into is uh without fail across indiana is our drug and and particularly heroin problem coming through um through indiana through different small towns and communities and i know you've hit this head on with the, uh, yes, the mayor made it uh, prior to one as public safety in her 100-day plan. We're well beyond 100 days now, uh, but uh, uh, I also wanted to help her in that, in that endeavor. And one of the things I thought that we could do is, is uh, put up a billboard uh, and basically tell the public where we're at on the issue. And, and um, I've, I uh, have a billboard now on uh, State Road 39 Bypass. Uh, that people can see it's it's going to be there for probably about two more months but it's it's pretty stark it's it's got a, a picture of a automatic pistol there with a syringe coming out of it and says uh, and big red bold letters says uh, heroin kills and it's not welcome here and i've got our shoulder pads martinsville city police shoulder pads right there so uh alongside of it so people know that that comes from us and the community and and uh you know the reaction reaction community the reaction has been very positive uh, we've got we've got i made small little placards of it that people are putting them, uh, the same image up in their stores you know and and it is a it is a um, uh kind of a dark uh, billboard and i uh, the next one i hope not to be uh but uh, if we didn't care about the people that are addicted i wouldn't have put it up well, and we both know working in this uh, heroin is dark, and it's something that unfortunately is part of our communities and and needs to be rid. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, and that, and that's just one of the things that we do. Yeah. Well, Chief Lang, thank you so much for coming in. We're out of time, but I appreciate you being here, friend, and and uh, we're welcome back anytime. 
Well, we're not only friends, but we're neighbors, and, and it's that's been great. Good. Well, again, we've been listening to the Indiana State Police Roadshow, brought to you by the Indiana State Police Alliance. Thank you for listening. We'll catch you next week. Roadshow is out.